A very good morning to one and all. I hope all of you are fine. And also I expect uh, all the students are going through the previous lectures. And in this lecture, <coughs> what we are going to learn is the extrusion process. This is where one of the very important manufacturing process which is very widely used in industries. So it's known to be one of the industry viable process, the extrusion. So in this lecture, we will discuss about the extrusion process and one of the very two important categories, hot extrusion and cold extrusion. Yeah, let's see what do you mean by an extrusion. The extrusion, uh, the extrusion, how numerous applications, as I said, in the manufacture of continuous as well as uh, discrete products. And the extrusion can be done from a wide variety of uh, metals and alloys. Also, in the case of plastics, we are using this extrusion technique to fabricate the, uh, to get the final product. So what is happening in a, an extrusion process? So you know, in, a, in an extrusion process, a cylindrical billet is forced through a die. So in order to get a better understanding, so imagine um, the toothpaste or any kind of um, the cream which you are using. See, the extrusion is similar to squeezing the paste from a tube, for example, the toothpaste, similar to squeezing toothpaste from a tube. So I hope if you can imagine that process, you will get an understanding of what is an extrusion process. So it's a cylindrical billet is forced through a die. Yeah, as I told you, the metals, alloys and plastics uh, can be extruded. And what is actually happening in an extrusion process is a block of metal is reduced in cross-section by forcing it to flow through a die orifice under high pressure. So its cross-section gets reduced. How? By forcing it to by forcing it to flow through a die orifice under high pressure. And again, another characteristics of extrusion is that large deformations can take place without fracture. So that's the advantage. The strain undergoes, the deformation undergoes or the possible delamination is very high in the case of an extrusion process. So the word extrusion, it is actually coming from a Latin word extruder meaning to force out. So, depending upon uh, the shape of the orifice, I told you uh, the so they are actually in an extrusion process, we are forcing the metal to a die orifice under high pressure. So, depending upon the shape of the orifice, the shape of the extruded cross section can be different. So, what I have shown in this schematic diagram is an a cross-sectional view of an extrusion process and here um, you can see that there is a billet you can see there is an uh, die you can see this uh, region is the uh, die opening Depend if, if this is a square cross-section you will get a square shaped product if it is a triangular shaped or circular shaped depending upon the cross-section of the orifice you will get different type of products now, what are the typical products which can be made using extrusion? Uh, for example, the railings for sliding doors, window frames, tubings having various cross section, aluminium ladder frames, structural and architectural shapes, window frames, etc. Now let's also look into what are the different commonly extruded materials. As I mentioned here, aluminium, copper, 
steel, magnesium and lead. Again, some other metals and alloys can also be extruded. So these are these are the commonly extruded materials like aluminium, copper, steel, magnesium and lead. An important feature of a extrusion process is that is the grain can be oriented in a favorable direction. That's the advantages. Usually along the axial direction. You can orient the grains in that particular direction. That's the advantage. Means the grain flow of the material lies in the direction most suited to resist applied stresses during operation. And again using this extrusion it is possible to obtain even complex shapes which cannot be obtained by rolling or other manufacturing processes. Because uh, the why it is possible is the dye used in the extrusion process is very simple and easy to make. And again, the extrusion. Usually, the extrusion is a single pass, uh, single pass process. You will get the um, the maybe the rough shape of the product can be obtained in a single pass. But maybe in some it has some exception exceptions like maybe some process require more extrusions, which will be explored in um, the advanced. Learning through uh, you may be, can learn it through advanced learning. You, you can understand that the extrusion is a learning. Uh, the sorry, the I'm very sorry. The extrusion is a single pass process, which means with high reduction in size is possible. And again, not only tactile materials. You may feel that it, it as I told you, one of the characteristics is it can undergo very high deformation without fracture which means you may think that only ductile materials can be extruded no even brittle material can also be extruded and when you are discussing about the extrusion you have to think about uh, you have to understand one of the very important parameter called extrusion ratio it's nothing but the ratio of the cross sectional area of the work material divided by the cross sectional area of the product extrusion ratio cross sectional area of the work material divided by cross sectional area of the product and for steel under hot extrusion, its ratio is 4 0, 40 is to 1, and for aluminium, it is 400 is to 1. And then next is the classification of extrusion. And if you look at the figure, it shows the classification of extrusion process. The extrusion can be uh, classified into uh, generally it is classified into hot and cold extrusion. The hot extrusion itself can be classified into forward and backward extrusion. Similarly for cold extrusion, both forward and backward. But in the case of cold extrusion, the forward extrusion is called a hydrostatic extrusion. Whereas the backward extrusion in the case of can be further subdivided into extrusion forging and impact extrusion. Let's discuss one by one. The hot extrusion. Let's look into what you mean by hot extrusion. So, in the case of hot extrusion, you know, you have learned about the hot rolling and cold rolling. Hot working and cold working. Yeah. The similar thing is, the similar concept can be applied here. The work material will be heat, is heated to a temperature above its weight crystallization temperature. So the increase in temperature, what will happen if you increase the temperature, it reduces the strength and increases the ductility, reduces the strength and increases the ductility of the material. So this hot extrusion is carried out for those materials that do not have sufficient ductility at room temperature. Maybe some materials will be very rigid at room temperature. And if you are going to give a small temperature assistance, it can be conductive. So this hot extrusion is carried out for those materials that do not have sufficient ductility at room temperature or in order to reduce the force required, the extrusion is carried out at elevated temperatures. And the hot extrusion uh, facilitate extreme size reduction, extreme size reduction. And again, um, as we discussed before, um, as it is uh, operating at very high temperature, 
it, it has some special requirements like for example while extracting steel special lubricants uh, like glass is used it also provides thermal insulation between the billet and extrusion chamber and uh, similarly the hot extrusion can be carried out um, for example sorry uh, while extruding this um, we use special lubricants like glass is used and again the hot extrusion as i discussed before it can be carried out as both forward and backward process now let's look into what we mean by uh, forward extrusion here we have a heated billet i told you the billet is uh, heated above the recrystallization temperature and this heated billet is placed inside the container portion of the equipment you can see that this is the uh, work billet which is shown in this figure and the ram is moved to apply pressure on the billet you can see that this is a piston shaped arrangement which we apply so the pressure is applied to the work billet using this ram and the metal is extruded through the die this die until a small amount remains here so here the extruded metal flows in the same direction as that of the movement of the ram and hence that name it is moving forward forward and extrusion and this is also called a direct extrusion forward extrusion or direct extrusion and another uh, classification is called the backward extrusion and maybe uh, of course the as the name implies the extruded metal moves out in the opposite direction as that of the ram the ram will move in one direction and the extruded metal move in the opposite direction this process is also known as indirect or reverse extrusion you can see the schematic diagram shows the typical uh, backward extrusion process you can see if you look at the uh, diagram you can see that here the billet in the container remains stationary and hence as it is stationary of course there will not be any friction between the billet and the die and the you can see the ram or plunger which is in the die and the extruded metal comes out through the hollow plunger you can see that this is actually the ram which where the pressure is supplied you can see that through this hollow plunger you can see the final work which is marked here it is come out when you apply the pressure using this ram to this work billet in the container if as the ram moves in this direction the work material moves in this direction opposite direction so one of the disadvantage about the backward extrusion process is the handling of extruded metal is not easy and another important extrusion process is the cold extrusion process of course what would be the cold extrusion process if the hot extrusion process is the extrusion process carried out at above recrystallization temperature what would be yes of course you are right the extrusion at room temperature or temperature lower than recrystallization temperature of work material is known as cold extrusion and usually this type of extrusion is used to produce parts in finished forms the main advantage of cold extrusion are the increased strength due to work hardening or the strain hardening because we are um doing the manufacturing process at the room temperature or below the crystallization temperature as the metal is not heated again it eliminates the formation of oxide layers you know well that if the manufacturing process like forging if the temperature is involved there's chances of formation of oxide layer that can be avoided in the case of cold extrusion it's not a continuous process of course the cold extrusion is a discrete process in which a single part is produced in each extrusion cycle and the cold extrusion is done in forward form is known as the hydrostatic extrusion and it's in the backward form it's called impact extrusion so that which we are going to explore now 
what do you mean by a hydrostatic extrusion and what do you mean by an impact extrusion so the, what, what is a hydrostatic extrusion as mentioned the extrusion done in the forward flow or this is an extrusion method in which the required pressure is applied if you look at the diagram if you look at the diagram schematic diagram you can see that look at the ram look at the some fluid is inside the container you have an extruded shape coming out you have a work billet you have a die here um, everything you can see which means some fluid is inside let's see what it can do so in this extrusion method in which the work pressure is required the required work pressure is applied through a fluid medium surrounding the cold billet you have a cold billet here surrounding which the fluid medium is there because of the pressure exerted by the fluid medium causes the extrusion process so the presence of fluid inside the extrusion chamber eliminates the friction between the billet and chamber walls good and the um, so what is one of the problem not problem it needs some specialized equipment tuning and higher setup time uh, again this has very limited industrial applications then then again if you look at this you can see that different type of uh, fluids are used uh, they are commonly used the fluids for ex creating the for exerting the pressure on the billet are glycerin mineral lubricating oil castor oil and isopentane now the advantage of this process is even brittle materials can be extruded by this uh, technique now impact extrusion of course they called extrusion uh, done in backward form is called the impact extrusion so backward cold extrusion is usually called impact extrusion of, of course it works with only softer materials like aluminum and alloys you if you look at the schematic diagram you can see that the setup consists of a punch and a die you can see a die which are arranged vertically and the billet is kept on the die you can see that the billet is kept on the die and you are allowing the punch to strike the billet against the die and due to the impact due to this impact when the billet is coming and hit on the bill sorry i'm sorry the punch is coming on and hitting on the billet due to this impact the metal is extruded to the gap between the punch and the die you can see that look at this look at here this is the um, that the billet before punching you can see that it is extruded out like this so the due to the impact the metal is extruded to the gap between the punch and the die the extruded metal moves out in the direction opposite to the moment of the punch that is why it is called a uh, backward extrusion now another important process related to extrusion is the extrusion forging or it's also called a cold extrusion forging is similar to the an impact extrusion but the difference is the side walls are much thicker the side walls are much thicker than and the height is more look at the the one which you have done using impact extrusion you got a um extruded product and here you can see that the one which you have obtained using the extrusion forging you have a thicker cross section and again the height is less Uh, similarly the same setup is used like a die and a punch does the work as in the case of the impact forging the punch comes down and hit the billet kept on the die and thus forging some metal between the die and the punch so and actually that what is happening the remaining metal is extruded through the clearance between the punch and the side walls of the die so uh, again its application is limited to small sizes and for non ferrous alloys only thank you uh, we will come up with another topic soon thank you